Okay, so we're now on board a ferry. It's uh, going to be riding over to the second largest of the major islands over here on the Maltese Islands, and that's the island of Gozo. The ferry ride from Chircawa in Malta to Emgar in Gozo takes about 20 minutes, and these ferries leave their respective ports on either side in order to get to the other quite frequently. Hence, there's usually enough opportunity in the day to catch one. So we're now on the northerly Maltese island of Gozo, and we're now going to do a, a little trek of the southeastern coast of the island. And then once we've done that, we're going to go off to the city of Victoria. Gozo is more rural and considerably quieter than its larger and more southerly sister island, Malta. Gozo has only 37,000 inhabitants compared to Malta's 410,000, and it covers an area of just 67 square kilometers compared to Malta's 246. The island's largest settlement, which we briefly mentioned earlier, is Victoria, and it has a population of about 7,000 inhabitants. Gozo is usually a popular choice for those who wish to hike and explore in one of the more remote areas of the country. It was also home to the Asia Window, a natural limestone arch that sadly collapsed under stormy weather back in 2017. But Gozo is also famous for having many interesting historical locations, so it may be a place of interest for history enthusiasts. So we're now in the quaint little township of Ilqala, right over here on the island of Gozo, which is famous for an annual folk festival. Uh, but the plan is now, and not to stay here, is actually to make our way to the salt pans further south of the island, and then make our way over to the bay. There are several engrossing hiking trails throughout Gozo, but if you're really ambitious, you could even trek around the perimeter of the island over the course of several days. Unfortunately, we didn't get time to explore all of Gozo, but nevertheless, we'll show you two hikes that you can undertake from the port of Imgar. So from the south of the island of Gozo, uh, you can actually see um, the north side, the entirety of the north side of the island of Camino, and behind that, you can actually see um, the north side of uh, the island of Malta. So as predicted, our journey did bring us to the salt pans, which are still traditionally used here in Malta. Extracting salt from salt pans is a Maltese tradition that has been practiced for centuries. When the seawater fills crevices along the coastline, it is left there for eight days before it is moved into smaller pans further away from the sea. There, the water forms salt crystals, which are then harvested and processed. So here we are now at the bay, uh, where, as you can see, it's a lovely place to swim. Um, we've got quite a few people over here behind us now swimming, uh, but it's also a nice place to just sit back, relax, and be able to have a few snacks. And that over there is the Blue Lagoon Bay on the island of Camino. Back in Emgar, you can also find another hiking trail which starts on the left-hand side of the ferry port as you exit from the main gate. Gozo is especially beautiful during the springtime when the flora of the island is fully in bloom and the greenery begins to reveal itself. And getting to see all of this with the backdrop of the blue Mediterranean Sea is nothing short of breathtaking. During this time of year, the weather is neither too cold nor too hot, so the local climate is usually quite ideal for hiking. Spring is also a time for religious festivals, in particular Easter. And seeing as Malta, in general, has a predominantly Roman Catholic population, and much of its culture is also intertwined in Roman Catholic tradition, it goes without saying that religious festivals are to be expected. In Gozo, these include a reenactment depicting the Passion of Christ and religious processions involving community members from all over the island. So we're now in the capital of Gozo, that's Victoria, and we're going to do a little bit of exploring. So one common thing that you find throughout the Maltese Islands are these little kiosks that sell uh, pastries, very similar to what you find in the UK, for example, that sell pies and pasties. So in this particular case, we bought cassata, which is a pastry filled with peas, and a pastizzi, which is a pastry filled with ricotta cheese. Gozo is also known for its local produce, such as gozat and goat's cheese, thyme honey, olives, fruits and biscuits. And of course, restaurants serving traditional delicious Maltese cuisine. 
Gozo, as well as the sister island of Malta, both preserve the country's traditional artisanships in filigree and glassblowing, from which their crafts are popular souvenirs among tourists to the Maltese islands. So one of the most prominent monuments and tourist destinations over here on the island of Gozo is the Citadel of Victoria, which we're currently in now. Now, this building, if you want to go back to its initial fortifications, actually dates back to roughly circa 1500 BC. The current structure that we're in at the moment dates back to the, to the late medieval period, so somewhere between the 15th and the 16th centuries. Though the Citadel has a fascinating history that we recommend should be explored in more detail, if timing or even interest is not on your side, you can always go there to appreciate the remarkable architecture and the stunning views over the island of Gozo. Naturally, the island of Gozo has much to offer the curious tourist in terms of places of historical interest and cultural paraphernalia, so if you ever decide to visit Malta, we would highly recommend that you give this fascinating island a chance. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel.